Hey there, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2007 Mercedes-Benz CLK350. And the customer's concern is that when you put in the key, nothing happened. I have my maintainer installed as per usual and uh, we're gonna go ahead and recreate the symptom. The customer uh, was uh, notified that it may very well be a key issue uh, based on the symptoms that we felt. And uh, they, he said that if it is, go ahead and uh, see what you can do about it. Um, we did mention the possibility of fixing the key if, it is, if that's the case. But for now, that's where we are up to in approvals. Um, for now, let's go ahead and recreate the symptom We've got a dead cluster, obviously, because our key is out. Let's go ahead and insert it into the EIS. Nothing happens, and we can't turn it. Our hazard lights work, so it's not like the battery is completely dead. Like I said, my maintainer is on there, but nothing happens when you insert the key. There is no steering lock uh, activity or nothing. So if you want a quick rundown as to how I am suspecting the key already, go ahead and refer to the link in the description it will take you to a video that I made in the past and uh, it, it basically gives you a quick cheat sheet in a way um, as to how to better pinpoint what the possibilities may be it could be the EIS it could be the key um, I'm not suspecting the steering lock you'll see in that video why um, I am suspecting the key let's go ahead and test the key we're not just gonna go ahead and add a key um, aimlessly we're going to test the key first with that. We're going to, we're going to, for that, we're going to use the IM608 and um, take it from there. All right, so here we have our IM608. I usually do not go straight to key or anything. I go through MO first in order to test the key. I do a lot of Mercedes-Benz key, uh, key-related issues, so it comes up first. This happens every now and then. This thing crashes on me. Uh, whoever knows what the fix is, let me know. There probably isn't one. I'm going to stick this in here already just because we're going to need to anyway. Ammo. Uh, let's go into Mercedes Benz. I usually go to, I press OK to skip this. I usually go into Expert Selection and Key will show up. And we're going to go to Key IR, which is infrared. Let's read the key information and see if it gives us anything at all. It is attempting communication with the key. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom you guys in a little. And failed to read key information. So what am I going to do? I'm going to open this key. We presented that option to the customer and they approved um, opening the key if need be. Uh, Obviously, we present them with all the options, and uh, this, this could be an all keys lost situation. This is the only key that they have. That's never a good thing. You always want to have at least two keys for every car, especially a Mercedes, because all keys lost turn into a much more expensive ordeal. But for now, we're going to open this, see if we could salvage it. And if we do, we're going to go ahead and see if the customer will approve to add a key instead of doing an all keys lost plus add a key. So. Technically, this is an all keys lost situation where the key, the only key doesn't work. This would fall under all keys lost situations. If the general public is watching this, more than likely, whoever you're dealing with is going to consider this an all keys lost situation. Um, I wouldn't go to a locksmith or to a shop if you're, you know, if you're from the general public. Wouldn't walk into a shop and expect them to do what we're doing right now, which is opening this key, checking out the motherboard, and seeing if we could salvage this thing. So don't expect that necessarily. Uh, if they do do that for you, that's awesome. But if not, don't take it personal. Uh, this is not something that uh, everyone does, but I think it's a skill that every, like all technicians, all uh, you know, diag techs and locksmiths should know how to do. And I'm pretty sure a lot of locksmiths know how to do it. But there could be they could have their own reasons as to why they wouldn't do this. Um, they are valid reasons. So if you're watching from the general public. Don't take it personal if they don't attempt to do this. But my suggestion to the whoever's watching really is that we this is a skill that we're going to have to learn anyway because 
there's going to come a day where you can't find that key, you can't find that module, you can't find whatever it is, or it's cost prohibitive. I know it's usually not your issue. That's, that's not, you, I mean, you didn't make the car, you didn't make the key, you didn't make that module, but it's a good skill to have regardless. It may just save you in a pinch, you know. Maybe I am, maybe it's impossible to calculate a pin using the IM608 and you don't have another tool or your, or your other tool, which is your, usually your go-to tool, is down. So there's a lot of good reasons why we should know this skill. Let's go ahead and proceed by opening this sucker up. All right, so we've got the key under the microscope. Let's go ahead and do a quick visual inspection as a first step and see if there's anything obvious, maybe a cold solder joint or something loose, uh, just as a quick preliminary. And uh, yeah, this is the, the top part of our circuit board. We've got our inductive coil here. We have our IR, IR transmitter right here. And um, I don't see anything obvious, nothing loose. Let's flip this sucker over. See this button is a little worn out. Our LED right here. Sorry for my nasty nails. <laughs> I should probably be wearing gloves. And I don't see anything too obvious. These are notorious for getting dropped and screwing up the inductive coil. Sometimes they loosen up. As you can see in the, in the last video that I did, the IR uh, transmitter was loose. And we were able to fix that. I would like to test this inductive coil. For that, I'm going to lay this down real quick before doing so. And I've got my fluke. This fluke is in diode mode, and when there is a, it places a small load across the leads, and when there's good continuity, we get a, a nice solid beep. So we're going to check across this inductive coil. There's two solder uh, joints here. And I could check to see if my connection is good by going to the other side because there's a whole leg over here. And then we could do the same thing over here. I'm just checking to see if I'm making good contact here. And no matter where I go, I've got no continuity across that inductive coil. So that inductive coil is responsible for transmitting the key data uh, to the EIS and without it, it is a complete waste of time. We're going to go ahead and see if we can find a donor board and an inductive coil that we can pull out of that donor board and uh, see if we could get this thing fixed. So we have a couple of donor boards on hand and it took a couple of tries to find the one that would work and I went ahead and tested this prior but for the camera we're going to go ahead and show um, that there is good continuity on this one. So that coil is good and although it's a different looking coil, it should get the job done. Uh, it's the exact same size as the other one. So uh, there are different size coils depending on which key you get. So let's go ahead and remove this one and transfer it over to our old one. Uh, I could go ahead and remove the old one first. We're gonna, for that, we're going to use hot air. And we're going to set that up at 360 degrees. And... Um, do 50% air. Make sure you guys can see this. Bam, and we are out. Let's go ahead and grab the other one. Nice. Let's go ahead and transfer it over. You can see the flow happening already. Just going to hold it down while I remove the air from the scene. 
typically I would like to flatten it down all the way. I did see some movement there, so I'm gonna just heat it up a little bit and flatten it down. Nice. So let's go ahead and uh, check for continuity once again. Believe it or not, you can ruin a coil by overheating it. Let's just make sure it's good. Nice. So let's go and test the key one more time with the Altel IM608. See if we have any uh, success. So let's go ahead and stick this chip back into its spot. And... <laughs> The owner's bird is uh, talking in the background. We're going to stick that right in there and go for read key information once again. Nice. We get to see a password and that will make our adding key super easy if it comes down to it. I'm going to hit copy just in case. So we got our repaired key. No battery or nothing. Let's go ahead and stick it into the E. Ah yes. Oh, steering unlocked and key on. Let's go ahead and see if this thing runs. Nice. So what's the point of the video, fellas? The point of the video is to show that um, when necessary, this skill will come in handy and maybe get it and get you out of a pinch. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see if the customer decides to do an add key. Um, I believe he will go for it. Uh, this is in no way trying to cheapen what locksmiths do. Just so, just, so, just to put that out there. Because I know a lot of locksmiths may look at this and be like, oh, what are you doing? Just add a key. This doesn't make it a cheap job necessarily. I'm not. We're not charging 50 bucks to do something like this. It's actually very uh, involved work. And not a lot of people will do it. Uh, but since we're able to... This uh, win, This is a win for everybody, the customer, for us, because we get to add a key a whole lot easier. And this is good practice for any time in the future where we need to do uh, rework. So um, I, ho I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for taking the time to watch. Uh, I hope that you see the value in learning this skill and um, the, the potential upsides to this, and especially in a pinch where you may not have any other recourse. And those moments will come. But for now, thank you all for taking the time to watch. I hope you like what you see. If you did, uh, consider subscribing. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that bell notification so that you can know when another video is going to come out. Uh, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. I, uh, I think I'll put like an update in the video whether or not they went for the add key. We're going to really push for it just because you should never have just one key for any car these days. Uh, that is pretty setting yourself up for a good tow truck bill or a, or or a hefty locksmith bill because all keys lost jobs will always be much more expensive than just simply adding a key. So don't let if you, if the general public is miraculously watching this, don't just stay with just one key, uh, especially a Mercedes Benz key or BMW or Audi or Range Rover or Porsche. If you only have one key, you are you are setting yourself up for a world of uh, hurt financially because it could be hundreds just to get the AKL done the Aki's loss procedure done and with that I'll leave you all to it thanks again for watching and until next time